Did you know that Michael Jordan had a very specific request when it came to making the movie air, including who could play what characters when it came to making this film? There's also a major reason why Michael Jordan's character wasn't really in the movie, plus a super abnormal way every scene was written that only these incredible actors could get through on time. There's a lot to unpack. You might recognize the actor who plays her, none other than the iconic Viola Davis. This was one thing that was really important to Michael Jordan when it came to creating this film. Viola had to be the one to play his mother. Obviously, she was thrilled to be handpicked for the role. If you've ever seen videos of Dolores Jordan, she's extraordinary. But she was also incredibly nervous. Even though she's one of the few people in the world who holds an EGOT, an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. That's an enormous responsibility yeah. mm -hmm. to play someone who's real, someone that, you know, is tangible. And like, it also helps that Michael Jordan is a huge fan of hers. Someone's gonna be my mother in the movie, it's gonna be the best actor in the world. So yeah, obviously no one had an issue with Michael's request to cast her, except of course Ben Affleck's initial worry that he couldn't get her on the film. Apparently, Viola Davis only met Michael Jordan briefly, one time outside of a hotel she was staying at. He said, oh man, my wife and my mother-in-law, they love how to get away with murder. <laughs> she clearly made a lasting impression. That was my only contact with Michael Jordan. This was another request Michael Jordan made in order for the movie to have his blessing. Howard White absolutely had to be in the movie. And if you don't know who he is, he's the vice president of Michael Jordan's shoe brand. Ben Affleck, who directed the film, took this as an opportunity to cast Chris Tucker, as he wanted to work with him and hadn't been able to for a while. I always wanted to work with Chris Tucker. <laughs> And like, I know Chris. For Ben Affleck, this movie was like a casting dream come true, especially because this was the first movie ever produced by his production company. Big moves. Another big decision that was made for this movie was not showing Michael Jordan in any of the scenes. I don't think anybody is good enough to create an environment where you can show somebody and go, and Michael Jordan. They just thought Michael was too much of an icon to try and recreate in a movie. They thought it would bring everyone out of the film and essentially lose the progress they made on creating the world they were trying to show. What I loved about it was he exists in the movie kind of in the way he exists in the consciousness of the world. He's always talked about in the movie, but never shown. Something Ben Affleck really loved is that it's a film that you think is gonna be about Michael Jordan, but you find out it's about somebody else instead. So another thing Ben Affleck really loves about this movie is that he like gets to spend time with his buddy, Matt Damon. Oh. Stop brushing me back. Stop crowding the plate. They've been friends for like 40 something years now. And like I mentioned before, opened this production company together. That was always the goal from the jump. Why aren't we hanging out and spending more time together since we managed to stay friends this whole time? And like, they've never had a better time since they've started working on movies together. These guys literally have an unspoken language. I loved coming to work every day. I love seeing Matt. I loved, first of all, he's a genius. Ben Affleck says this movie was the best work experience of his entire life because it never once felt like work. Another reason this movie was so huge was because it was Ben Affleck's first time directing. Well, technically. I mean, we did high school plays where he was like, listen, dude, I think you should do it like this. <laughs> Apparently, he's been directing Matt Damon for 40 something years. Actually, though, it wasn't that crazy of a transition because they've been writing, acting, and producing together for all these years. The transition into directing felt very natural, and it was something he was waiting to get into, more professionally, for a long time coming. This movie was also the perfect origin point for their production company. Ben Affleck originally received the script and like obviously loved it. When he showed it to Matt Damon, he brought it to his attention because he thought the movie aligned with everything their company represented. Knowing your worth and self-respect and taking risks. The only thing Ben didn't approve of upon reading it was that there was actually no African-American people in the original script. I know, that's actually pretty crazy. This is what led to his conversation with Michael Jordan and the specific requests and character changes. I'm gonna make sure that if I do make this movie, whatever is important to Michael Jordan be included in this story. And speaking of requests, let's loop back around and talk about Michael Jordan's request for his father's character. He said, my dad had the best personality I've ever known. I said, and 
We got the right guy. That guy is Julius Tenen, Viola Davis's husband. Everyone on set really took to him. Apparently, he's the coolest, most hilarious guy you could ever meet. This guy is amazing. Everybody loves him. And like, Viola Davis also loves working with her husband. Exactly who we are in is where what we are in private. We are fun. We laugh all the time. Julius was also super stoked to see his name in the reviews. He's like, <laughs> V, it's been a long time <laughs> since someone mentioned me in a review. Uh. So this movie has a ton of abnormally long scenes. I'm talking five, six, and seven page scenes. For those of you who aren't familiar with screenplays, even a two page scene is considered long. So this movie was chock full of scenes that should have made the shooting days incredibly long. But because of how talented and professional these actors were, they were able to get everything done in a surprisingly short amount of time. We budgeted 33 days. We were done in 24 days and we couldn't, we couldn't slow down. This is actually an astoundingly short amount of time to get a movie done, especially with scenes of this caliber. And like that says a lot about the level of talent on set. I woke up every day and went to work and was opposite a hero of mine. He said they would often get everything done a little earlier than intended and they'd have to scramble to figure out what they were going to do next. So while we're talking about heroes, Peter Moore has some tough shoes to fill. The shoe designer, played by Matthew Mayer, actually passed away about a week before the role was given to him. So he had to look for outside sources to craft his on-screen character. How do you describe getting to the mind of somebody who's so good at what they do? He ended up watching a ton of documentaries and footage on Peter to try and get into his head, but he ultimately found the experience let's be real, pretty boring. He said, listening to someone talk about their craft isn't as interesting as you would think it is. At the end of the day, he concluded that Peter Moore was just a guy. A guy who was really, really good at shoe designing and decided to keep his character more specific to the pages of the script, rather than his real life personality. Did you ever notice there's always a big speech in a sports movie? There was a lot of pressure for Ben and Matt. They were writing this speech well after the movie was done shooting. They ended up re-recording some of it in ADR, and they really wanted to capture the essence of the film, and the fact that this responsibility isn't all it's cracked up to be but also the fact that everyone was hearing something completely different. The only person who really hears the core of the speech is, of course, Michael's mother. It's not all gonna be great. Like, this is a burden that's being put on my son. Again, the emphasis in the movie is not on Michael, but on his mother and the experiences of all the other characters around him. So this big speech is constructed a little bit differently than your average sports movie speech. And there was a lot of pressure behind the scenes to get it right. Air is definitely not your typical sports movie. From Michael Jordan being a backseat director, Viola Davis filling the enormous shoes of his mother, and Matt Damon and Ben Affleck bringing their bromance vibes to the set, I'm still kinda reeling. What was your favorite behind the scenes moment? 